Yes, Kiran, we are live. Good evening to you all. Uh, welcome to you to today's session. Uh, on behalf of Anna Jori, I welcome you all to today's sex, uh, session on gender and sexuality. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to be able to invite uh, my dear friend, uh, A. Mangai, uh, with whom I've had a long association of more than 10, 12 years. Um, a. Mangai uh, is the pseudonym of V. Padma, who has taught English uh, at Stella Maris College, Chennai. She's been actively engaged in theatre for close to three decades. Uh, she writes bilingually and uh, in Tamil and English and is also a translator. Uh, her book, Acting Up, Gender and Theatre in India, was published by Left Word in uh, 2015. Her talk today is titled Queering Theatre, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, invite her and uh, to hear her speak and to listen to all her rich experiences of uh, theatre and activism. Over to you. Thank you, Kiran. Um, it's really a pleasure because I, I hardly know much about what exactly is going on uh, in the Northeast in general, um, and with, the, with your particular group about gender and sexuality. But Kiran told me that it's almost like a weekly meeting. So you meet every uh, Thursday. Um, and uh, I would really love it if there are discussions. I'm also joined by my friends who have been working with me in this field. And I am also going to talk to you um, more as a theater maker than as an academician. Um, but I guess it's you slipping to each other. So bear with me um, if I just drop some names, uh, which I would try not to do. And um, I also want to kind of make it a little more uh, personal. So based on the experiences that we have had in Tamil Nadu, um, now close to about 2003, 17 years now. Uh, so it's very, very closely entertained, intertwined with the uh, queer community, especially the trans community, uh, and their uh, uh, struggles for rights and um, basic minimum uh, human existence that they have been struggling for. And I think the struggle is still on. So I want to really kind of address these things on um, three major questions. I'm taking gender and sexuality into one as one unit and the idea of community and the question of identity. And these things are going to crisscross cross, and the most favorite word now, uh, uh, theoretically, the intersectionality of these three will keep coming in. I think um, it'll just face us, whatever, whatever we are doing. But what we are going to do now is with these three terms, we are going to kind of see how theater interacts with that. So I'm, I'm primarily speaking as a theater worker who, who kind of has been addressing these three major axes, you know, um, that we are going to be talking about. Now theater primarily is, um, is a marginalized art form among the arts because you, you really kind of uh, don't give the privilege that you would give, let's say, to dance or music to theater. And very often people think that, you know, anybody can do theater. Yes, anybody can do theater. We are not denying that because all it takes is passion and hard work and you can actually kind of be part of theater work. Everyone can do theater, which is what theater says. But it also insists on uh, the kind of training that one requires to be in theater, to be functional in theater. So we're really talking about three aspects which are crucial or the bedrock of theater. So we, are talk we usually talk about training and tuning the body, voice, and the mind. So body is literally the be all and end all of theater. I mean, especially I mean, I, I don't know how much you make sense of the role of body now that we are meeting on this online and these virtual bodies that we are meeting. But then um, all of us do know that the body um, sits, speaks, stands up, dances, sings, you know. So the body has a way by which it can really ki kind of communicate to everyone. And it has its own language and idiom. 
And because there are different kinds of bodies around us, different kinds of bodies communicate differently. And um, so what, when you're talking about theater, honing your skills in terms of physicality or uh, the body, you are trying to capture the differences that you have in the bodies that we see around us. So that is a crux of the whole thing. And as with body, the voice also is something that is uh, to be cultivated. The voice is something that we need to train ourselves, not just to sing, but even to speak, to pause, to remain silent. I think all of which is connected to voice. And I think the combination of body and voice is what is going to really train our mind or it activates our mind. Now, if you realize we are really turning, reversing the order of knowledge system, which are based on knowledge, which works towards the body. So everybody, any, anybody who believes in a certain um, concept of the world, world, which is based on ideas, would probably say, it is Descartes who says, I think, therefore I am. So you privilege the mind over the body. But then theater provides you a certain epistemology or a knowledge where the privilege is on the body. It doesn't matter how uh, scholarly you are, how well-read you are. But if you are not able to communicate that with your body and voice, you have no standing in theater. So it is talking about an alternate way of building knowledge. I want to underline that because it is very crazy to think that an art form which privileges body should be getting into the conventional realm of gender binaries, should shun the bodies which have uh, different kinds of sexualities, should actually exclude a lot of community and be not ready, you know, and is not ready to take up the question of identity that all of us are talking about, you know. So bear this in mind that we are talking about uh, knowledge that is created through body. And I want to share with you one of our latest uh, works, which is, which is multilingual and primarily in Canada, which was which opened in Bangalore last year. And um, I mean, I would like you to see that before I really make comments. It's a performance called Freedom Begum, which is based on the research done by Rumi and Sunil, uh, who are based out of uh, the Bangalore and they have an organization called Ragi, which produced this play. Yerdu bere bere nambike galu. Yerdu sai sulubo hudu. Jeeva sade hutti sulubo hudu. Penki alia hutia da begum mahalu. Maria managi hutti bandu kere yani rali mulugi mindu. Burgella namke hanji ho pirtale. Kheluti 
we can go back and pause and look at the images of the actors who were there. Now, I think this particular play required all the dropouts from the mainstream society to actually come and say, we have a life of our own. You know, uh, not now. Uh, yeah. Um, so you, you do have uh, the question of class, because you're talking about people who really are not up in the social ladder. You're talking about hierarchies that are existing. You're talking about marginal voices which are left out in the history and culture. So what theater has provided or what, what I think one needs to really look for, if you want to queer theater, if you want in our attempt to queer theater, queer theater you're bringing in together. And if you had, um, noticed the cast themselves were a mix of uh, people who were um, not, who, I mean, they were cisgendered, uh, the lead singer was cisgendered, but they were uh, trans people, they were trans uh, women. You have Saumya who has joined us today. You, have, you had trans men, you had Akoti, who were part of the cast. Now, this journey, of staging a particular production where you have a mixed gender and sexuality group is not easy. I mean, I've, I've, I've had much better positive experiences uh, in Tamil Nadu and I think in even in the discussion, uh, not just me, we have uh, Srijit who has also worked with the community who can share with us how you need to work in order to be inclusive. So, the one aspect of queering 
is to be inclusive. Irrespective of the class, the gender, the sexuality divide that is ruling over us in our country, including caste, I'm sure there must be other ways of exclusions in the Northeast, which also need to be taken into account. And all of us are living through times when there is an exclusive state that is ruling us. You know, so one needs to really belong to India. And how do you belong to India? By being born into a particular religious community, as far as the state government goes. So everybody else becomes a foreigner in this land, or you have to prove your citizenship in this country. So in a context like that, I think, at least in the theatrical space, we need to really kind of work towards imagining an inclusive space. Now that inclusive space has to wrestle with a lot of issues, you know, apart from how many people are willing to come, how many people are willing to withstand the fire test, fire ordeal and stay together. And there will be dropouts, there'll be people who will leave, leave, up, leave, and maybe theater is a bit too much, you know, you need a certain dedication to be in theater and to work with people whom you are not always all that comfortable, takes a lot more energy and skill and openness, I think. Now that's not an easy thing, but theater also gives you an added issue of its own conventions. Because if you're a student of theater or student of performance or any arts for that matter, somehow, all over the world, there is a difference between a high art and a low art. So one is really looking at what is considered to be high art is a certain um, legitimacy that is given to certain conventions. Now I want to just, just pick out one convention from theater, which many of us have worked with it. And I want to share with you what Anuradha Kapoor did with that convention of female impersonation in theater. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with um, Jai Shankar Sundari, who was a Gujarati actor who did female roles on stage. Now, many of you have various uh, conventions where you have the men performing the female roles, which is, a, which is a, taken as a given. I mean, I, we come from Tamil Nadu and in Tamil Nadu, we have uh, Terukutu, which is our traditional art form, where we have um, male uh, actors performing the female, and usually those actors are excellent in their skills. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that by not allow, I mean, not allowing women to perform female roles comes from a very, very deeply rooted patriarchal feudal thought, because to have a woman on stage was a no-no. And to have a woman dance and sing for you is something that a respectable uh, society will not allow. So there was a lot of struggle for women to become actors. And I think that began, began in India from late 19th century. But you had certain section of women who were called the Devadasis or the Ganikas or the Tavais who were given the duty to be artifati. You know, so they, but then they were not considered to be respectable in the eyes of the world. So you were always looked down as a woman because you're not really pertaining to this respectability that a woman is supposed to really give. Now, this female impersonation as a convention is built. I mean, many of us who are doing theater, you may be a woman. I mean, I, uh, I, I had a trans uh, friend called Priya uh, Priya Babu, who runs a resource center in Madurai now. And I still remember, she says, if both of us walk, uh, let us see whose back is beautiful. You know, and I always told her, no, no, I'm not even competing with you because she used to have lovely long hair. And, you know, uh, she was certainly much more beautiful in terms of the feminine values than me. You know, so I was not willing to really go for a fight with her for a competition with her. She was certainly beautiful. But this idea of beauty, this idea of what is the real femininity itself is a construct, which is why we are looking at size zero people in our films. 
you know, I mean, gone are the days when you had really plump, well-built women who would be your heroines. So we, all of us are looking for these fair-skinned, very thin kind of a person who would stand for femininity. Now, we, let us look at what she did in the play. What I want you to note is that the way, uh, I mean, this is a film made by another feminist filmmaker called Madhushri Datta. And uh, she documented the process of making this play. So you're not, you, you do get a shot of the performance, but what you're going to watch is the making of the play Sundari, an actor prepares. I suppose we are going to see the Sundari from now. The Sundari must have seen these and made him sit. We may look at some of the possible postures for you. We are using this painting. We are using this painting. So this table will probably be on the wing. Mostly, we are always having a visual of Ravi Varma constantly visible on the wing. जहाँ तक मुझे याद आता है विस्नगर का आज ये कोलाहल भरा स्टेशन रोड उस समय निर्जन सा लगता था। छोटे से नीम के पेड़ वाला घर, आसपास पाटीदार, नायक, भोजक, अन्य जातियों के मकान, बाहरी चमक कम, पैसा भी कम, पर अंतर शांति से समृद्ध। हमारे घर के कोने में मेरे दादा त्रिभुवन दास के स्वर तानपुरे के साथ खु he does not absorb the color quickly. The curtain is just wonderful. Hmm? The curtain is just hmm. magic. Oh, I am going to continue that hmm. all through. Achha. That's beautiful. Neelu ka beetle ko kitna achha ho raha. Oh, that's beautiful. Ajayin gai vadam mali jayin o kakai Ajayin o akore kali jayin o kakai मेरा पूरा शरीर बच रहा है। मेरी उंगलियां क्या सिर्फ तुम्हारे बालों को छू रही हैं? इस तरह कि मालूम नहीं कहाँ तुम खत्म होती हो, कहाँ मैं शुरू? Thank you. So if you have noticed it, uh, Anuradha Kapoor uh, retired as a director of National School of Drama, and uh, this was about 25 years ago. And the two artists whom uh, you saw there, one who was trying to reproduce uh, Ravi Varma's style is Neelima, um, and the other male artist is Bhupen Kakar, who is no more. Both of them belong to Gujarat. And uh, so for them, it is also about warning up the history of Jai Shankar Sundari. And you're looking at the personality of this artist who is trying to make himself into a woman on stage. You know, and there are, he has written his autobiography and he actually says Sundari. Sundari is actually the name for Desdemona 
in the adaptation of uh, As You Like It that they did in Gujarati. And, um, and he retained that. And I believe there were patrons who would really like uh, Jay Shankar Sundari to come as Sundari with them in their party. So for him, impersonating the female form did not stop with just on stage uh, experience. It, it also kind of spilled over into off stage. Now, what I think Anuradha Kapoor has said is to actually tell us how these conventions of female uh, impersonation begins and what are the things that we need to really study in terms of the images that go into the making of this femininity. So if you're able to really kind of dissect what is it in this femininity? Is it the eyes? Is it the breast? Is it the way you hold your hand? Is it the way you dress up? Is it the music? Is it the walk? You know, so like the last line says, you really don't know where you begin and where my body begins. In other words, it is the person who is looking at the femininity in you and your own self who is looking at the feminine in you. And I think it holds good for uh, cisgendered male or female and vice versa. You know, if you're going to be act as a male and you're a cisgendered female, and what are the things that you're really kind of conjuring up to show the maleness in you? You know, so just to kind of think of it as, as a mustache that you are, pasting onto your body or a hairstyle and everything is only, only skin deep. What theater is really look, looking at is to build it into your body and to experience the way you would speak, talk, everything. Now you look at any of the trans women uh, around us, they have all spent their time to both study, learn and unlearn everything that is supposedly masculine. So you look at the real life stories of the trans uh, women, they would come up with things like, you know, I mean, I was wearing my sister's skirt and blouse and then my father gave, and gave me a beating or my elder brother um, bit me up or, you know, Lena Sudhuvichanga, I mean, you have Brevity who joined, I don't know if she's still there. So if you've read her Penguin autobiography, The Truth About My Life, uh, it really kind of brings out the kind of struggles you make to really lead the life of whichever gender you choose to perform. You know, so I'm borrowing the term perform here from Judith Butler, who says gender is performative. So I'm not even borrowing it from theater. She borrowed it from theatrical uh, genre. But, uh, you know, I'm quoting that theoretically because gender is something that you perform because even if you're cisgender, there is no one way to be a woman. There is no one way to be a man. And as long as we really agree to that and we are not uh, upset by different ways of being a woman or a man, then I think it becomes easier. And when you apply it to theater and you want to queer theater, you are able to bring in images which are, which are completely um, not acceptable or not familiar. Let me put it that way. You are not familiar with it. So I just want to share with you uh, images from some of our plays. And uh, before I move on to my experience of working with the trans community. Shall we screen the PowerPoint one, one by one? Yeah. And let's stay on the picture while I'm talking about it. I mean, I just chose this. These two are from two different plays. Uh, the one on your left is a play which is talking about migrant workers. But I mean, I, when I was looking at this image today, I was thinking this was 2008 production. And I already have Living Smile Vidya as part of the group, even though I, I mean, for me, she's an artist. You know, I, I did not really get into questions about her gender or sexuality at that point. Um, and you have Srijit also uh, who is there. So th in this play, we are talking about these migrant workers who went en masse from Tamil Nadu to various parts of South Asia and they were identified only as numbers. I mean, today, uh, I mean, when I was putting this talk together and I chose 
that image, I was thinking that is all we are according to the CAA today. All that you need is your number, not just your number, your father's number, your grandfather's number, whatever. So in this, we use this uh, technique of uh, holding your number to your chest and being identified only as a number uh, to, the, to colonialism, to the sugarcane workers in Fiji, about whom one of our major poets in Tamil Nadu has spoken about, you know, so uh, to sugarcane workers in Fiji, to the tea estates in um, Kandi, Sri Lanka, so all of them were numbers. On to your right, we have another play, which is called Nangaredi, and uh, this particular play has a mix of uh, cisgendered and trans people and queer people in terms of sexuality. And um, what you find on their chest is a Velcro uh, square, Velcro box, if you want to call it. So what it really talks about it is that the society is putting you into Velcro boxes of male and female. So we use the pink to denote that you were identified as female and we use the blue to, to be identified as a male. You know, so in the play, they actually played everything while they were sharing that story. Uh, so basically you, what we are trying to create is an image of a relatively gender neutral bodies, but which are, which are stamped with certain identities. Can I move to the next slide? This is from a play called uh, Manasinaraipu, The Call of the Heart. And uh, this was the first play that I did as part of Kannadi Kalekuru. I think it must have been 2003 when we formed that group. And uh, the trans community had filed a case in Madurai court to get their ID cards because all their documents at that time were referring to them as as boys, let's say. So when they were born, their school certificates, everything was referring to them as boys. So what they were doing was making appeal to the queen of the land at that time, Jailalita in Tamil Nadu, to accept that they have a different identity now and that is of the female. So, and, and then I did have in the group one trans man before his transition and we are going to see him share his story. So I don't want to get into that story. So we, I, I didn't want to put him behind the curtain and identify him with the clap with which the trans uh, women are identified with. The Tirunangais or the Arwanis that you are talking about are identified by their hand clap, you know, which is, which is signaling um, to the society, I'm here, you better look at me. And I've come here either asking for, uh, you know, for money as part of my everyday uh, routine or I'm seeking uh, any other attention, whether it is sex work or I'm a dancer who is there. So, and then you find the cloth uh, um, with plants, which is organic. And you also have the hairs there. So what we thought was while we are creating the image of the trans people there, the hair played a major role. I think for me at that time, immediately Priya Babu was also involved in a lot of small business and they were making this hair oil and selling at that time. So it is from there that I got this image. At the end of the play, everyone wears their hair differently. One will black, one will make, put it up, you know, you wear it differently. So this is um, to, to let, let your hair down, as they say, idiomatically, is to actually let go and be free. But then letting your hair down in our culture represents a woman who is violated, a woman who is angry, a woman who is fighting for justice. All those images are built up. And then we were trying to really tell the stories through the long hair that you see there. Yeah, the next image 
is that of Revati. And uh, Revati is here, so she would probably share her experience. This is a play called Velle Mori, um, where she has dramatized her own uh, life story, what she has given in the bio autobiography. But I don't think we stopped with that. The, in the play, she actually becomes a conscientious citizen. I would rather let her do the talking, you know, because she's present and you can hear from her um, whatever her experience is about that. Thank you so much. Uh, so I just want to move on to the history of how we really built up all these plays. And uh, from 2003, it is, uh, it's now so many years and we have many other people who have joined us as artists, who as directors, and you have Srijit who is working with them uh, as separate groups, which brings me to the second topic called community. Now I'm using the word community in the sense of communitas uh, for those of you who are interested in the theoretical usage of the term. So because community is a much abused term here because everybody, ah, ninge namma ala, you know, are you our kind? I'm translating it. When that question comes, it usually refers to your caste or your religion or probably the region that you come from, you know, whether you're coming from Madurai or Coimbatore or Madras, you know, ninge namala, you know, are you are you my man or my person? So when you're talking about that, your identity is decided by that. I mean, if I, I, in smaller uh, towns or villages, the moment you ask me the, uh, my address, the street where I belong to, it immediately means that you are asking my caste. Because if you know the uh, street of the person's house, you know the caste of the person. And there are people who don't have proper streets who are pushed to the cherries, who would be the Dalits outside the village, the outskirts of the village. You know, so you, you, what you're really um, looking at in terms of community is something that you are born with and you're building. But when I am using the word community, I'm using it in terms of a community that we build for ourselves a community where there is a safe space, a community where sharing is not a problem, a community which is accepting you no matter what. You know, so it, 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 is, a, it is something that is created in the liminality of being together, you know, which is, which is an, I mean, I would say the jamaats that you have among the Tirunangai community, the trans women community in India, is uh, probably one of the traditional ideas of giving a space to people who are thrown out of homes and being nurturing, building up certain kinship, which are very, very different. You know, they call each other mother, nani, and there is, there is a separate language. I mean, I would leave it to Soumya or Revati to explain to you about the trans life within the Jamaat. Now, these uh, communities can also be hegemonic. So you do have, uh, you belong to a Jamaat, you have a person within the Jamaat who is adapting you or adopting you as a daughter, but the norms of that running of the Jamaat is again feudal because we don't have any other role models. It is like any queer couple, whether gay or lesbian, one of the struggles that the LGBTQ, IA+, the queer community is facing today is the right of marriage. The gay marriage and the lesbian marriage that we all uh, want to endorse. I would support it with my critique of marriage because I come from a feminist politics where you're critiquing marriage, you're critiquing family because we know there is an inherent hegemony built within these structures. But at the same time, for people who are feeling marginalized and finding their way into acceptance into the community, probably these systems of marriage and family are one um, visiting card, 
you know, to say that I am respectably married, I have, a, I have adopted a child, we are a family. So, you know, so that kind of images of family is something that you need to keep working with. You need to um, work with it, but be critical, you know, because we all know that it comes with assumptions of kinship. And there is, there is a hierarchy that is built, which actually led us to the second play in Kannadi Kalekaru, which we did, I think, around 2007. Uh, and we called it Urayada Nenevugal, Unsettling Memories. And I did have this one trans man who was part of both my plays, whom you saw in the previous um, image as well, Selvam, who, um, who was who is now who under treatment to become a male and who is a handsome young man now with a lot of medical and clinical issues uh, that are attendant uh, with it. But if that is what he wants his body image to be, there is no contention with that, no second question asked. So when we did the second play, the, trans, the community, the Kannadi Kalekuru and the organizations that they belong to wanted to do a play on acceptance of the family. And I was directing the play and I come from with my own personal history where I broke away from my family because I chose to marry outside my caste. And I know it, I'm not equating the trans experience of leaving the family, but it was quite similar when you are in your 20s uh, to leave the so-called sanctuary of the family and to come out on the street and make it big. So I did not have any romance, romantic idea about the family. And I was supposed to direct it. And, but they wanted to say, they said that all the problems that we are undergoing is because when we were in the adolescent age, when the family did not accept us and we were left in the lurch, so to speak, onto the streets. And if the family does not accept us again as somebody belonging to them, I mean, or every single trans person that I have been meeting and I'm still meeting is forever struggling for this one acceptance or one invitation from their natal family. And I know what it means, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm aware. I mean, I, I lost my father to COVID some three weeks ago. So despite all my criticisms rationally about what family means, I also know that the ties are really difficult to deal with. So what we did was to, to work with family photographs telling their stories. And here is what Selvam said about his family. You'll see the last clip. Can we have the last uh, video clip? Do 
identity of data itself changes because it is it is not uh, the kind of data that really upholds status quo that upholds whatever is kind of kind considered to be um, aesthetic and respectable and mainstream you know so we need to really kind of build these questions and criticality within the practice of data in order to queer data i'm going to stop here and i i also want to inform uh, the listeners here who might be from different parts uh, that there are people who have worked with me on this journey who have, uh, who are from tamil nadu and who are from theater um, and are active and part of the community work uh, that happens who will also be willing to share if you have questions uh, about the queer community in tamil nadu and i would also like to really share from the northeast experience about uh, you know things that you are discussing about the kind of uh, art practices that you are involved in thank you so much once again for this opportunity of sharing and being able to communicate and um, at least like this at least virtually yeah thank you uh thank you very much uh, mangai for your fantastic uh, talk uh, uh i think uh, your talk is probably the first uh, talk in our series which has made complete use of technology you have you have used all the possible media and it's it is wonderful seeing your pictures and the clips of clippings of the plays and it was really very nice and uh, i'm sure we all enjoyed it thoroughly um so i will just uh, kick off the discussion and then maybe uh, later on uh, the audience uh, is requested to uh, uh, either type your questions in the chat box or uh, you can just probably wait for some time and maybe uh, once we are done uh, then uh, you can actually unmute yourself and ask questions uh, so let me just uh, begin with a few observations that i made uh, from what you have uh, said and shown shown us so far one of course is uh, the very interesting use of mariamman uh, in that play uh, it was uh, very interesting that you have um, that the troupe or the actors have in some sense co-opted or claimed mariamman as their own and at the same time also uh, shown the goddess of all its uh, religiosity and it's you know all the caste implications also seem to be there i'm not sure how explicit the caste implications were in the play uh, especially the non dominant caste groups who might be worshiping mariamman in the various uh, forms and uh, the fact that uh, the actors themselves uh, besides of course being a, a part of a queer spectrum are also not uh you know they're not dressed in traditional wear i mean they have you've you've designed costumes for them but they're not like uh, i could make out that garugat garugatam and all that but it was not the the clothing was not you know didn't go along with the parts and everything so i found that very interesting that uh, disjunction and uh, also the fact that uh, it's uh, she's also being seen as a very anti caste figure as an anti caste at anti patriarchal anti respectability anti purity a uh, kind of a, a figure you know so i found that very uh, uh, provocative uh, very provocative the entire thing uh, and uh, also the fact that uh, your the dialogues themselves also seem to suggest the complete blurring of boundaries uh, boundaries and linguistic boundaries caste boundaries gender boundaries and uh, you know and i think uh, you did a wonderful or the troop did a wonderful job of showing that even through the dress and the dresses the clothes they were wearing the gestures so uh, i was just wondering if you wanted to just it is not a question just just an observation if you wanted to say something about that yeah thank you so much i mean i'm happy uh, the whole play was situated around um, alsor so it's about a building in alsor and this particular uh, karaga is about alsor mariam and temple i mean revathi knows more details so this particular mariam um, has what they call a spoon karagam so they they carry that big uh, it's just flowers and um, only chalanga there's no not much of uh, beating drum beat or anything and she passes through the masks the mosque the muslim dominated area and in that festival i mean somya was in the production she is here um if somya can actually switch on the video somya so that people can see 
um, uh, so some uh, we also saw not just uh, people from various castes, but we also saw a lot of trans women who were the priests in that particular uh, context. So by bringing in that reference to Mariaman, I think we are all, and they were many of them Tamil speaking, and in Bangalore they were um, uh, they they were migrant workers. You know, I mean, it it, it seems very funny that we had picked up that form at that time. Uh, but uh, for me, the immediate thing was primarily about um, about Karagam being an Alsur form. So Sami, our one and the dress pati ke karar. Karahat dress lama ninge Karagam pan ninge la. Oh, okay. Ah, that pati ke karar. Ille, yenna puri la mangai ne ke. Karagam, Karagam tam epom pan ra dress oda ninge pan la la. Ama. அலங்காரம் <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so let me just uh, translate for the yeah. audience uh, that uh, Soumya just said that uh, you know uh, I was asking her why is it that uh, the actors and performers are not wearing the traditional costume that goes with the karagatam which is a form of dance where you play sports of different uh, uh, like sizes on your head and you dance with it it's also like almost like a test of your balance balancing abilities so uh, she was yeah. saying that it, it has to do with comfort with how comfortable you feel in the costumes you wear on 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 stage or on on in the street and so she it's not only about you know being traditional but also about being comfortable and being easy with your movements on on stage and uh, she also was talking about the the floral decoration the flowers that people or the actors or the performers wear and so i found it very interesting and the other end of the vishana solla virumbra you know solla virumbra vishana na na vandu anga da irukken na vandu na irukiradhu fraser town la adha vandu also vandu romba kitta அங்க அந்த ஏரியால நீங்க நடந்து அந்த நீங்க அங்க இருக்கிற தெருக்குள்ளயோ சந்துக்குள்ள நீங்க நீங்க நடந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா அங்க வந்து அங்க இருக்கிற இடம் நீங்க பாத்தீங்கன்னா ரொம்ப மிக்ஸ்டான ஒரு இடம் அவங்க ஒரே இடத்துல வந்து ஒரே தெருல வந்து சர்ச்சும் இருக்கும் யூல் ஹாவ் த சென் மேரிஸ் சர்ச் அதுக்கு பக்கத்துலயே ஒரு மாரியம்மன் கோவில் இருக்கும் சோ மாரியம்மன் எது மேரி எதுங்கிறது இட்ஸ் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் லைக் யூனோ இட்ஸ் வெரி ஃபுளுவட் பவுண்டரி Exactly. so i found that very that area very interesting because it's so religiously so uh, kind of you know, i mean i don't know where the like ning on the on the on the nadigar so on the nadige sonna madri i can't make out where this body begins and where this body ends on the madri so exactly. it was interesting yeah yeah but so i think uh, i mean i liked uh, i mean if you notice in samya's answer it is as corporeal as comfort you know Yes. but there is a certain degendering and desexing in the way we have used the costume in the play because you did not want to really make them into female or male or any easily identifiable one except the lead narrator who is in a skirt all the others are you know in a slightly mixed kind of thing that's so much for the I think I'm seeing some questions Kiran on the... I will I will I will I'll just I'll yeah. just I'll turn to them I just have a few more observations yeah. one of course is very interesting that in both the play and the clipping that you showed uh, I mean of the trans man as well as the other uh, of uh, of sundari that the actors are actually uh, stripping and dressing up on stage that becomes a far more subversive thing to do I'm not sure if this happened also when Jay Shankar Sundari was dancing and performing because I was also thinking of Kat and Hansen's work yeah. uh, along with Anu Anu Kapoor and she makes a very interesting point she says that i mean and I, i think she's also trying to be critical about this which is the fact that when performers perform like people like sundari perform uh, hindu femininity right for, for for that matter even bal gandharva performing a hindu a very seductive sexy hindu woman who is wearing her blouse or braiding her hair so yeah. there there is something subversive subversive about that but there's also something very uh, normative also and that yes. i think has to be questioned question. especially when katrin hansen also says that there are lots of non hindu women like jewish women these baghdadi women uh, baghdadi Jew, jewish women and parsi women and anglo indian women performing hindu femininity on stage taking on hindu uh, female names yeah. that becomes a little bit of a 
because I'm not sure the line between subversiveness and normativity is also very thin, right? Sometimes yeah. it can yeah. be very thin. So that I think needs to be interrogated. That how how far do you push that line? You know, is this, to what extent this is normative, and to what extent this is actually being subversive? Yeah, that's a very very interesting observation. You know, but then this um, making and unmaking, as we call, you know, in terms of dress up, dress and makeup and all that, I think it's a very, very familiar feminist trope all over the world, actually. And in my play, I don't remember when it really came into my theater, but clothesline, uh, making and unmaking has been a very, very, um, I have used it so often in theater. And I really think it's, it is meta-theatrical because you are really t telling the audience that we are only making data and this is not reality. So we are not getting into this creation of an illusion that one is yes. expected to have. We are not going into that. Yeah. Yes, because no, because the reason why I said this is more subversive is when you have the actor uh, stripping and wearing something else on stage, that's a lot more subversive than coming on stage as a woman and then being seductive and then probably taking it on off stage also. But you know, when the fact that you are choosing to stage the obscene, that which is not supposed to be seen on stage is actually a lot more transgressive yeah. than uh, anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I also found it very interesting that you that one of the performances used Bupin Kakkar's uh, images and paintings. Because I was thinking of also his, I remember some talk I was hearing about some, I, I, I don't know, I forget who it was, but it was a very interesting talk, I think by Panikar, on Bupin Kakkar's art, where he talks about a certain shift from uh, water to oil. Right, and he did not uh, force this point, but that watercolor painting, the watercolor medium, was so powerful because there you could actually use watercolor paintings to show the uh, porosity between borders yes. of bodies. It yeah. was a lot of his paintings had to do with intergenerational love between yeah. older men and younger men, and uh, you could you could show that a lot more fluidly with water, yeah. but with oil there was a certain definition to the bodies. Yeah. yeah. So I found that very interesting yeah. that he used yeah. his paintings. But that's yes. Anuradha Kapoor. That's from Anuradha Kapoor's play, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and then uh, this other one more thing, just a few more points, which is that uh, uh, you also talked about uh, that, that image of the hair being let down. That was also very nice, I thought. That, that, that image of, of hair, and I also remember Priya Babu from years back. I remember her beautiful hair and her dresses. I mean, she had beautiful hair. And I just remember the fact that you used hair uh, on the on that screen yeah. Uh, yeah. along with a background of trees and leaves and the way they're actually wearing their hair on stage that was actually i mean that was i mean i would i would love to see the actual uh, performance it was really very nice yeah. Thank you. um and uh, yes yes so um yeah maybe i will uh, i will just uh, stop there i think i'll just look at the uh, questions that we already have in the audience uh, mm -hmm. so far i will just uh, maybe read out a few of them uh, one uh, uh, mangai is uh, this uh, the question from uh, Samhita Borua, which is, uh, is theater of the oppressed a form of queering theater? What was the audience like in the clipping shed? Mm. See, the, these plays, like I said, had a specific social context when we made these plays. So the uh, it, it was certain act, it, it was a community activism by the group to get their electoral ID card. So we, our target our audiences are very, very clear. I mean, we wanted to create public awareness and everything, people who, who would support us. For example, we opened that play in a Dalit conference. So we were trying to get allies, allies who would stand by us in that struggle. So very often, I think I was less adventurous than the group, I was scared. I was scared to take it to a men's college, for example, in Chennai. But then the group was very, very um, adventurous and they were also a lot more resourceful in just using whatever space they get into a performance space. So I should say, at least the first play, we were all very, very uh, happy and successful. The second one, uh, because it is on family, and there were uh, group members who wouldn't mind the family members to watch, but some of them did not want the family members to watch. So there was always a tension when you did the second play. Um, but I think that created a momentum. I mean, as all of you must be aware in Tamil Nadu, 
the movement of almost caught up with the national uh, movement for um, section uh, you know, for fighting against section 377 for the abolition so from early 2000 there were a lot of meetings and human rights groups which got along together so this particular play was created and uh, in a way inspired and motivated and was actually to help the movement so there was a there was a base for me to perform you know, uh, so al along with saying that theater created awareness, I should also say that theater comes from the context where there are socio-political movements. Yeah. Okay, then uh, there's a few comments. Uh, um... I like the concept of migrant workers across political boundaries connected through the theater platform. And this is again from Samita Borwa. It reflects on transnational labor identities with linguistic intersections. Uh, Thank you so much, Samita. I know it's a comment, but it's really bothering me, you know, especially after the COVID and the migrant workers situation and what the CA is doing um you know in terms of identity in terms of your card and paper and everything um i really really feel that we should really work across this i mean we are we don't have to wait for three generations to uh, find out a migrant form in our state i think we should acknowledge it uh, much more earlier i mean we are talking about a fast society today you know, we are, we are a WhatsApp society. So we should be doing, you know, for example, those African community people, Siddhis, who came and settled in Karnataka, you know, in a particular village. And then um, only now it is, it is on the newspaper. Otherwise, it was an academic concern. But I, for me, I think we should not work on it. I mean, all of us should really be talking about a nomadism that is there in our lives of moving from one place to another and assimilating newer things, probably losing some of the older things by the way, but, but that assimilation is very important, you know, and that is where we need to assert our identity as citizens. And I think it's all the more important in a place like Northeast and you would know it better. Okay, uh, so uh, the rest of the audience, uh, you may ask your questions, you may unmute, unmute yourself and ask questions. Ninga Tamil, Ninga Kerdi Kiklan. Now on the translate panel. Yeah, I, can I ask um, Srijit and Revati to be on video? Maybe you can keep your uh, audio on mute, uh, but I would really love the audience to look at you. Yes. Please. ரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கிரேவதிங்கி
ஆனா இந்த நாடகம்ன்றது ஒரு இருபத்தஞ்சு நிமிஷத்துல ஒரு ஹாஃப் அன் அவர்ல ஒன் அவர் இல்ல ஜனங்களை எந்த அளவுக்கு நம்ம வந்து நம்மளுடைய செக்ஸுவாலிட்டி பத்தியும் நம்மளுடைய வாழ்க்கை வரலாறு பத்தியும் நம்ம வந்து புரிய வைக்க முடியும் அப்படின்றதுல நம்ம வந்து பெரிய சக்சஸ் ஆயிட்டு இருக்கிறது நம்ம நம்ம வந்து சொல்ல முடியும் தமிழ்நாடு பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் இந்த எல்ஜிபிடி கம்யூனிட்டி இவங்களுடைய வாய்ஸ வந்து நாடகம் மூலியமா கொண்டுட்டு வந்தது அம்மா மங்கையம்மா தான் அவங்களுக்கு நான் வந்து சல்யூட் பண்ண நான் வந்து விரும்புறேன் நான் ஏன்னா ரொம்ப முக்கியமான விஷயம் அதுக்கு முன்னாடி நிறைய பேர் ஆண் பெண் எல்லாம் வந்து நாடகத்துல பண்ணியிருக்கிறாங்க ஆண்கள் பெண் வேடம் விட்டவங்க எல்லாம் வந்து பண்ணியிருக்கிறாங்க ஆனா எந்த அளவுக்கு எங்களை வந்து அதுல வந்து அஹ் உண்மையான எங்களுடைய கதையை சொல்லியிருக்கிறாங்கன்னா கதை இல்லைன்னு தான் சொல்லணும் இப்ப நாங்க வந்துதான் இன்னைக்கு நிறைய எங்களுடைய உண்மையான வாழ்க்கை வரலாறு நாங்க வந்து சொல்லிக்கிட்டு இருக்கிறோம் நாங்க அது அதை வச்சு பார்த்தா நான் வந்து இந்த தேட்டரை ஒரு ஆயுதமா தான் நான் வந்து பாக்குறேன் நானு இது ஒரு அட்வகை சிஸ்டூலா தான் நான் வந்து பாக்குறேன் நானு தேங்க் யூ சோ மச் ரொம்ப நன்றி ரேவதி நான் வந்து உங்களை முத முதல்ல வந்து பன்னெண்டு வருஷம் வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடி சென்னை உடைய முதல் பிரைட் மார்ச் தான் உங்களை பார்த்தேன் ரெண்டாயிரத்தி எட்டுல தான் உங்களை பார்த்துருக்கேன் அங்க வந்து நீங்க அருமையா நீங்க ரொம்ப அருமையா ஒரு கனடா பாட்டு பாடினீங்க கனடா அப்புறம் தமிழ்லயும் நீங்க ஒரு ஸ்லோகன் பாடினீங்க அப்பதான் எனக்கு தெரிஞ்சது நீங்க வந்து எத்தனை மொழிகளை நீங்க வந்து தெரிஞ்சு வச்சிருக்கீங்க அதுல நீங்க பாடுறீங்க அதே மாதிரி நீங்க நடிக்கிறீங்க உங்களை வந்து நான் என்னுடைய பாராட்டுகள் சோ ஐ லெட் மி ஜஸ்ட் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் வாட் ரேவதி ப்ராட்லி சோ ஃபார் தட் ஷீ ஹேவ் as uh, she was talking about how she's also grown up in bangalore in a very in a area very close to where i i also my parents also live and she was talking about how uh, the theater or the theatrical space has been quite exclusive and she was also very scared about you know not uh, not being permitted or not being allowed to enter these these uh, theater these the spaces of the theater and uh, she's also been acting in many different language theaters from kannada to tamil as well as malayalam right now with uh, with shrijith and she also is very grateful and thankful to mangai for introducing uh, lgbt and queer issues through theater uh, she was talking also about how her own autobiography has been translated and performed uh, into uh, as as a theatrical form uh, you saw a, a clipping or a photo of her performing uh, from her own uh, autobiographical work and she was also talking about how uh, you know it has been really uh, uh, challenging and uh, the fact that you know it's not always easy uh, to be able to come on stage and to perform and how uh, you know there's also a difference between in uh, the written form the novel uh, or, the, or the autobiography which she has written and she even says that uh, you know you can write something which is 500 or 600 pages long but when it comes to performance even a 25 30 minute performance can you know linger it can it can linger uh, way past the performance you keep thinking about it it stays with you for a long time uh, so romba nandri revithi neenga pesnadukku shrijith neenga edavadhu solla virumbringala she she has to he had to leave he has just sent me a message okay okay fine okay so uh, if anybody else uh, would like to say something please uh, unmute yourself you can share your comments and questions uh anyone else um this uh, is milan would you like yes yes yeah I, i was just thinking that when i saw that um what do you call uh, their uh, querying theater started almost 2002 or pre right yeah. much ahead of us so we need your help and we have to make movement over here i don't know how to go about it you know we have to create similar movement we have to to empower the uh, trans women community specifically uh, because um, trans men also but uh, in guwahati the movement whatever where uh, trans community movement going on it's generally uh, most people think trans is equal to hijra so we i'm a trans my, uh, man myself uh, really have to really you know fight it out that hey trans doesn't mean that hijra they are trans men they are trans uh, gender neutral people and things like that happening and also the hijra community are uh, up and part there are only one or two people who are in power and uh, and there's some political stuff going on so it it difficult to get in when i myself is not a hijra all right you don't get uh, we do not even know how to get inside right 
so i do not even know where to start you know i am very i see your stuff and i feel a little jealous because you guys are so much ahead of us uh feel uh, you know but Milin, show your face video me yeah yes lovely i am here <laughs> lovely nice to, meet to meet you, you. i'm going yeah. to actually ask revithi also to share probably you have heard her speak and we yes. have one section as uh, part of the play that she does not the autobiography itself about the same yeah. issue that you are talking about you know because many people think that when you are talking about trans you are referring only to trans women yeah. and they really yeah. you know and uh, so i'm going to yeah. ask her to actually say that section from our yeah. from our play which i yeah. think kiran will uh, translate but thanks for bringing this up i completely totally 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 agree with you it's not easy which is why i mentioned jamaat you know i mean probably uh, that's also because of that kind of systematized way of uh, uh, you know combining together which started probably with a lot of good intention but it also has inbuilt hegemony you know so and, it really and, kind of, it's a double edged sword and not only the trans uh, his you know even the uh, you know the uh, social welfare director uh they don't know what it trans mean in previously yeah. is that my experience <laughs> and they they think trans is equal to hisra not even trans women are also not included that means there are quite a few yeah. trans women nowadays who are you know non hisra you know mm. they are doc studying doctor yeah. or trying to be a lawyer or there are many people are uh, gender neutral yeah true and they are not so how we don't have any visibility even in a national level in the council there's no there's only his you know community yes. so there's a whole political you know and i am so focused in other activities so the trans identity is a small identity for me i am doing other stuff so it's very difficult you know how how do we make this moment so yeah. we'd love to hear you revithi yeah. uh, revithi solma avanga kekkuradhu vande tirunambigal patti romba pesamaatengranga குறிப்பா அவங்க ஊர்ல வந்து திருநங்கை கூட பேச மாட்டேங்கிறாங்க அவங்க வந்து ஹிஜ்ரான் தான் நினைக்கிறாங்க எந்த ஊர்லமா இவங்க அசாம்ல இருந்து பேசுறாரு அவரு சோ எப்படி அந்த அந்த கான்ஷ திருநம்பிகளும் இதுக்குள்ள அடங்குறாங்க அவங்களையும் நம்ம ஒரு கம்யூனிட்டியா ஐடென்டிஃபை பண்ணி பேசணும்ங்கிறது நான் சொன்ன நம்ம நாடகத்துல இருந்து அந்த ஒரு செக்ஷனை மட்டும் நீங்க பேசிக்காம பெங்களூர்ல ஒரு சங்கம் ஒரு நிறுவனத்துல நம்ம வேலை பார்க்கும் போது நிறைய வந்து டிரான்ஸ் மண்ணுகள் வந்துட்டு வருவாங்க அந்த கிரைசஸ் எல்லாம் நான் வந்து ஹேண்டில் பண்ணிருக்கிறேன் நான் ஒரு டெம்பரவரியாட்டர் கொடுத்து அவங்களுக்கு வந்து ட்ரைனிங் கொடுத்து அவங்களே சுயமா இண்டிபெண்டா வாழ்றதுக்கான வழிவகைகள் நிறைய பேர்த்துக்கு நாங்க வந்து பண்ணிக்கிறோம் அதன் மூலியமா தான் எனக்கு வந்து டிரான்ஸ் மண்ணுங்களை பத்தி நிறைய எனக்கு வந்து அறிமுகமாச்சு எனக்கு ஸோ நிறைய பக்கம் நாங்க புக் எழுதுனதுக்கு அப்புறம் நிறைய பேர் என்ன வந்து செமினார்களுக்கு கூப்பிடுவாங்க காலேஜ் ஆர் யூனிவர்சிட்டிங்களுக்கு எல்லாம் நான் போவேன் எங்க போனாலும் எல்லாருமே என்ன நினைப்பாங்கன்னா மேடம் மேடம் நாங்க வந்து டிரான்ஸ் கம்யூனிட்டி பத்தி நாங்க வந்து ஸ்டடி பண்றோம் நாங்க வந்து ப்ராஜெக்ட் உங்களுடைய புக்கு தான் வந்து ஒரு ஆய்வு நூறுல நாங்க எடுத்திருக்கோம் அப்படிம்பாங்க நான் வந்து எம்எல்சி பண்றேன் நான் வந்து பிஎஸ்டி பண்றேன் உங்க புக்கு மூலியமா தான் பண்றேன் அப்படிம்பாங்க போற பக்கம்ல நான் வந்து டிரான்ஸ்ஜெண்டர்னா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் நீங்க யாருன்னு நீங்க வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் புரிஞ்சுக்கங்க டிரான்ஸ்ஜெண்டர் அப்படின்னாலே ஆண் ஆனா இருந்து பெண்ணா மாறினவங்களும் பெண்ணா இருந்து ஆனா மாறினவங்களும் இது ரெண்டு ரெண்டு பேர்த்தையுமே இது வந்து குறிக்கும் ஏன் நீங்க வந்துட்டு டிரான்ஸ் மண்ணுங்களை பத்தி ஏன் நீங்க எடுக்க மாட்டேங்கன்னு நான் வந்து நிறைய வந்து போக்கஸ் பண்ணுவோம் நானு அப்ப எல்லாருமே சிரிப்பாங்க டிரான்ஸ் மண் இருக்கிறாங்களா அதுக்கு வந்து சாத்திய கூறுகள் இருக்கா அவங்கள நாங்க வந்து பார்த்ததே இல்லையே உங்களை தானே நிறைய நாங்க பாக்குறோம் அப்படிம்பாங்க நாங்க ஏன் எங்களுடைய கம்யூனிட்டிலேயே ரொம்ப பேர் அதை ஒத்துக்கிறது இல்ல ஏன்னா நாங்க முடிய வளர்த்தி மூக்க குத்தி மார வச்சு வஜனல் மாதிரி எல்லாம் பிளாஸ்டிக் சர்ஜரி நாங்க எஸ்ஆர்எஸ் பண்ணிட்டு நாங்க வந்து பெண்ணா இருக்கிறோம் இந்த சமூகம் எங்களை பெண்ணா ஏத்துக்க முடியும் ஆனா இவங்க எவ்வளவுதான் வந்துட்டு மார வெட்டி எடுத்துட்டாலும் ஆம்பளை மாதிரி பேண்ட் சட்டை போட்டாலும் முடிய வெட்டிக்கிட்டாலும் இவங்களுக்கு ரோட்ல நடந்து போனாங்கன்னா பயாலாஜிக்கலி இவங்க வந்து பெண்ணுன்னு சொன்னாக்கு எடுத்து கடத்திட்டு பேர் ரேப் பண்ணிட்டாங்கன்னா வயிற்றுல குழந்தைய சுமந்துட்டு வருவாங்க இவங்க எப்படி ஆம்பளையும் நம்ம ஏத்துக்க முடியும் அப்படின்னு என்னுடைய கம்யூனிட்டிலேயே நிறைய பேர் ஒரு ஒரு காலத்துல வந்து சொன்னவங்கதான்
இந்த மாற்றங்கள்லாம் போய் இன்னைக்கு நம்மளுடைய சவுத் இந்தியாவில் எடுத்துக்கிட்டா பர்டிகுலர் கேரளாவில் எடுத்துட்டா இன்னைக்கு நிறைய எஃப்டிஎம்களுக்கு அதாவது ஃபீமேல் டு மேல் டிரான்ஸ்ஜெண்டருக்கு பார்ட்னரா இருக்கிறதே வந்துட்டு எங்களுடைய திருநங்கைகள் தான் நிறைய பேர் இன்னைக்கு வந்து பார்ட்னரா இருக்கிறாங்க இன்னைக்கு நிறைய வந்து பேச ஆரம்பிச்சிருக்காங்க நம்மளுடைய இந்தியாவுடைய அந்த சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் ஆர்டரா இருக்கட்டும் நம்மளுடைய பில்லுகளா இருக்கட்டும் இன்னைக்கு டிரான்ஸ் மென்னுகளை பத்தியும் இன்னைக்கு வந்து நம்ம இன்க்ளூட் பண்ற அளவுக்கு வந்திருக்கிற நம்ம ஃபுல் அண்ட் ஃபுல் எல்லாருமே வந்து இன்னைக்கு வந்து ஃபைட் பண்ணினா கூட சில ஆக்டிவிஸ்ட்கள் வந்து எஃப்டிஎம்ஐ லிங்க் பண்ணி வந்து ஃபைட் பண்றதுனால இப்ப நிறைய பேர் அதை வந்து ஒத்துக்கிட்டு வர்றாங்க நிறைய பேர் ஹெல்ப் பண்ணிக்கிட்டும் வர்றாங்க ஸோ அந்த அந்த நாடகத்துல நான் வந்து ஒரு 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 பாயிண்ட் நான் வந்து டைலாக் கூட நான் சொல்றேன் நான் உங்களுக்காக போடி போடி நம்ம காத குத்தி மூக்க குத்தி முடிய வளர்த்தி பூவை வச்சுக்கிட்டு பொம்பளை கணக்கா நாம இருக்கிறோம் இவனுங்க எவ்வளவுதான் வந்து பேண்ட் சட்டை போட்டுக்கிட்டு மாற வெட்டிக்கிட்டு வந்தாலும் பொம்பளைன்னு தெரிஞ்சா கடத்திக்கிட்டு போய் ரேப் பண்ணுவானுங்க வயிற்றுல குழந்தை சமந்துக்கிட்டு வருவாங்க எப்படி இவங்கள போய் ஆம்பளைன்னு சொல்றது அவங்கள பத்தி ஒரு புத்தகம் எழுதியிருக்கிறேன் ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பதினாறுல எ லைஃப் இன் டிரான்ஸ் ஆக்டிவிசம் அப்படின்னு ஜுவான் பக் புத்தகம் வந்து வெளியிட்டு இருக்காங்க எனக்கு அந்த மாதிரி பத்து பசங்க இருக்காங்க ஆஹ் சோ எனக்கு பத்து பதினஞ்சு பேர் என்ன அம்மானு கூப்பிடுற ஒரு திருநம்பிகள் நிறைய பேர் இருக்காங்க என்னால பிள்ளைய பத்து வழி அனுப்புற பாக்கியம் தான் எனக்கு இல்லை எனக்கு வந்து கர்ப்ப பை இல்ல பெற்றால் தான் பிள்ளைங்க கிடையாது அந்த மாதிரி எனக்கு நிறைய பேர் எனக்கு வந்து பெங்களூர்லயே இருக்கட்டும் உங்களுடைய கல்கத்தாவில அசாம்ல இருந்து கூட எனக்கு வந்து அந்த மாதிரி இருக்கிறாங்க எனக்கு பசங்க இருக்கிறாங்க எனக்கு மகனா இருக்கிறாங்க என்னைக்குமே என்ன ஒரு டிரான்ஜெண்டர் அப்படின்னு ஒரு ஆணா பிறந்து நீங்க பெண்ணா ஏத்துக்கக்கூடிய இந்த சமூகம் ஒரு பெண்ணா பிறந்து தன் ஆணுன்னு அடையாளம் காட்டும் போது அதையும் ஏத்துக்கொள்ளதான் வேணும் அப்படின்றதுல ஒரு ஆழமான ஒரு ஸ்ட்ராங்கான ஒரு உறுதியோட தான் நாங்க எல்லாமே இருக்கிறோம் யாரு உங்களை ஏத்துக்கலையோ உங்களை பத்தி பேசலையோ நாங்க இன்னும் பேசிக்கிட்டு தான் இருப்போம் எங்களுக்கு எப்படி எந்த அளவுக்கு நாங்க போராட்டம் பண்ணி நாங்க முன்னுக்கு வந்திருக்கிறோமோ அது மாதிரி நீங்க வர வரைக்கும் நாங்க உங்களோட இருப்போம் அதனால நீங்க கவலைப்படாதீங்க தேங்க்யூ சோ மச் தேங்க்ஸ் ரேவதி ரொம்ப நன்றி நன்றி ரேவதி நீங்க ரொம்ப அருமையா பேசுனீங்க ஒரு கிளாரிபிகேஷன் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்றதுக்கு முன்னாடி நீங்க நடுவுல வந்து டிரான்ஸ் மேன் வந்து டிரான்ஸ் உமனுக்கு வந்து பார்ட்னரா இருக்காங்களான்னு சொல்றீங்களா இப்போ ஆமா <laughs> for a lot of trans men who had uh, who needed help who had been abandoned who had been renounced from their families who needed who are, who are alone in this world so she has given them shelter she has also worked a lot with trans men in different capacities uh, she has uh, sorry na revithi ninga vandha neriya pesningala enakku vandha ellam full la ninga enakku vandha nyamam varala ana na mudichalukku na vandha translate pandren so uh, so she also talked about how um, uh, trans men uh, so she was she was reciting these two lines uh, from her uh, performance and she was talking about how uh, uh, she was being approached by a lot of students who had who were working on her autobiography for their own uh, doctoral work or their phd masters work and they and many of them including uh, scholars as well as maybe other trans women were also shocked to know that there are trans men they did not they couldn't believe that there were women who wanted to transition and become men right and uh, for them they were wondering is it even possible is it even possible to have something like a trans man because uh, trans women uh, you know can undergo uh, surgery they can you know acquire breasts they can undergo vaginoplasty uh, they can uh, you know make themselves look like a like a woman but uh, if a woman tries to cut her hair short and you know has uh, wears uh, male clothes and uh, uh, you know uh, tries to even behave like a man uh, it's still possible that their bodies might actually give them away and they might actually end up being raped and they might actually end up uh, you know uh, um, carrying uh, unwanted babies right in their wombs so 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 that that's so the part of the two lines from the play also basically refer or refer to that that uh, you know these are these uh, do you call them uh, trans man is it possible for a woman to transition and become a man what if she is raped and what if she is impregnated and uh, so but then she also ended ended by saying that she Uh, 
uh, that uh, you know that uh, the gender the third gender bill uh, you know should uh, make uh, you know attempts to try and include trans men into the purview of the bill and she's also expressed her uh, full support to trans men and she is uh, a very uh, supportive of trans men and she also says that she knows many trans men uh, from different parts of uh, bangalore the state from the country also there are many people trans men who consider revthi to be their mother they call her amma and uh, she has a lot of uh, she she herself doesn't have a womb so she cannot uh, have her own child she can't be a biological mother but she considers herself to be a mother to many of these trans men who have uh, whom she has gotten to know in her life yeah uh book elidi kelidunga zuban yes 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 she has uh, she has also written a book which came out in 2015 a trans life and activism uh, which was published by zuban yes adu vandu peti adu vandu peti illa neenga vandu neenga eduthu neenga peti eduthirkingala illa neenga avangala pathi eludhi rendu peru vandittu satya ji apdindru avangale eludhi kudutanga right right up oda kudutanga matha avangala na vandu research panni kerala la tamil nadu la andhra ku la poi eppdi அவங்களை சந்திச்சு அவங்களோட வாழ்ந்து அவங்களோட ஸ்டோரிய கலெக்ட் பண்ணி எழுதி இருக்கிறேன் நான் அதுல Okay, or so chapter la varu avangala so so she has interviewed some people but she's also lived and worked with a lot of these f2 m people from different states including andhra and karnataka uh, okay uh, any other questions or responses that you have or maybe if you want to say anything mangai at this point not really i mean i i am i'm just um, i mean not as a last word but one one of the many last words that one would like to have is about um, you know while uh, the question that um, nitin no nilin 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 yeah nilin raised so just like how that the one is asking for inclusions in various other uh, struggles i think uh, the trans or lgbtq and the general queer community should also be part of various other struggles i'm sure it is you know maybe probably you are engaged with uh, some of them yourself you know whether it is about caste whether it is about class question or about language question or about the state violence and the rest the queer group community should also be quite visible in these struggles which is something that i think we need to really uh, work for and push for you know without undermining our own sense of identity and the community that we are talking about yeah thank you uh okay uh, i just had one uh, couple of questions mang i just thought of something which yeah. is that uh, do you have instances from your performances uh, of uh, women i mean do you have a completely female uh, cis female cast which is uh, all acting as men do you have instances of that no i've never really attempted that not okay. even in stella maris when i did okay okay you know but uh, we did I have mean... one professional stage artist female artist because it was an all female group performing mani meghalai i see and we had one of them doing the male part but yes. we did the script in such a way that we brought in only that male character into the performance all the yes. other male characters are just referred to and uh, do you also have uh, instances of trans men uh, performing trans women and vice versa on stage Yes, I mean in both that play where you had that Velcro thing. Oh, yes, yes. Have that we, um, in fact, we had one in the Freedom Begum section also, where there is a trans man who actually performs a trans female. You know, but he wasn't willing to take his beard, so we made him cover his hair like that and hold the pallu like that. Right. So right. there are also other instances because, for example, you had. Um, um shakil saravan and shakila who was a koti who was there in freedom begum and uh, in one particular scene they actually dressed themselves in into a sari, three of them into a sari you know to suggest trans female and i had said okay use a sari you know but then um, uh, outside of rehearsals one day i said okay i, I mean he is married and i know he has children uh, though we call him she chakila um so and then um, no no you know i don't think they will really like me doing this role on stage that was his answer and then he said you know my mother would die she made me promise that i would never wear a sari again 
you know. And then I, I, I mean, my, I was shocked. So I told him, I don't want you to break your promise. You know, uh, but through me, a trans woman can be in other clothes. So we just had suggestive clothes for him. Why Saumya wore the full sari? You know, so there are also stories uh, to be told on stage, and there are their own life stories which we have to balance. And I don't think we can undermine the life story. At least not in this case, because already it is a very brittle uh, sense of self that we are dealing with, you know. And I think one need to be sensitive to that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other responses from the audience or any other questions that you'd like to ask? Anyone? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Uh, uh, um, Ashok from uh, Good evening, uh, one and all. Uh, now here, uh, I just uh, one observation that you know when you are talking about the Dalits and marginalized and migrant labor, and uh, with uh, the transgender women or men or LGBTs, you know it may not match with that kind of equal identity of the caste, uh, because here you know anyone can be you know in any religion maybe uh, you know transgender men and man uh, and, you know with this identity. So uh, here my observation is that uh, you know caste is because of the religion in Hindu, uh, in uh, you know uh, religion. Uh, in case of you know uh, Christian and Muslims, you know you may find you know this kind of, these kind of identities. Uh, uh, in case of you know whatever uh, you are talking about the you know uh, untouched identity, that is uh, you know uh, not disclosed by anybody else and uh, you know not dare to talk. Uh, but uh, here you are talking about this uh, you know equally with that kind of uh, caste uh, casteism. Uh, uh, ostracization or uh, you know exploitation i think you know uh, it may contradictory point with this kind of whatever the ideological biases uh, bias of for the uh, caste ostracization or exploitation with the uh, gender exploitation uh, because you know you know in uh, in all the religions we may find you know these kind of identities uh, but you know in case of the you know identity of a dalit maybe a different uh, you know um, exploitation because of uh, that religion. Uh, hope I, I, I think you know you can uh, you understood it. And here uh, you know whatever you have been you know trying to you know explore the uh, voice voice of voiceless you know making sense of uh, that uh, whatever the identity will will uh, you know make sense of uh, one's life uh, or uh, you know identity of uh, whatever their you know uh, life with the you know uh, human concern. Uh, I think you know. Uh, um, my observation may have this kind of, uh, you know, contradictory between the uh, caste as well as uh, the gender consciousness of uh, the identity which you are representing. Uh, is this is a uh, uh, yeah yeah, Mr. Mr. Ashok. Let me just uh, clarify. Uh, so I just so that the speaker can understand. Are you trying to say that uh, certain identities have to be privileged over others during certain times? Otherwise, everything gets all mixed up. Is that, is that what you're trying to say? No, no, here, you know, uh, this, uh, whatever the gender uh, identity is, uh, you know, common in all the religions. Uh, it it should not be represented uh, with the caste uh, identity. Uh, my, you know, point is, uh, is this. And it should as not. As an artist, because, I mean, um, if, you, if you're going to be discussing caste and gender academically, I agree with you. Yeah, you know, okay. Because we are, that is a different issue. But when you are an artist, art is meant to give you that freedom to really kind of uh, bring in complex relationship between various identities on stage. So I, 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 I would not shun any of these issues. And I mean, if you look at the recent example of, um, of Janice and, uh, sorry, Jairaj and Benik's death, they were Christians. But they were of a different caste and they paid a heavy price with their lives. So when it comes to state impunity, I think uh, it, the marginality can be either caste or gender or sexuality, you know, and I don't think I, I'm really not for infighting among the marginalized section which I think is very, very destructive and it is not a constructive uh, ideological way of looking at these struggles. Because I don't, you cannot teach them against each other. 
madam my point is you know as you said you know you uh, had dropped your results uh, you know uh, from these identities to say or to explore and or to have that kind of liberty or freedom to you know have that identity of their own uh, my uh, my point is here we should not uh, you know uh, attribute this identity with the caste this is uh, you no know, as you said you know academically you know we can accept as an artist you know you we have the liberty to you know have this kind of impersonalization or uh, uh, to represent uh, that unexplored identity i also ag agree with this but only the thing is you know here you know uh, caste is different and the gender identity is different maybe i'm you know, not denying that i'm not, i'm not asking for erasure of any identity but at the same yeah. time you cannot say that you can't combine the two that's okay. the problem <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Madam, um, yeah. So thank you. Thank okay. You. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Any other last responses before we finish? We have time for just one more question. Yes. Uh, I think Samita has another comment. I would like to put forth another aspect of theatre traditions in Assam. I think we have bhavana performed in Satriya culture where men used to perform female roles. In contemporary times, mobile theatre is another popular culture. Yeah, actually, I've seen both of them, and I'm aware of how they really perform it. You know, um, I, I mean, I am of the view that when you are seeing yourself as a contemporary uh, art practitioner, um, while you should be critical in whichever way possible, you don't you don't have to really prefer one art form over the other. You know, I mean, the whole Satya dance form. It took uh, so many years for people to keep working on it to even revive the form. So, and, and now, of course, it is on par with any other national level classical dance forms. I mean, for that matter, even Bharatanatyam did not exist as Bharatanatyam even in Tamil Nadu. Today, everybody thinks it's a national art form. It was a Devadasi dance form. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think you take the idiom from various art forms and uh, give it a contemporary weightage, you know, I mean, kind of give it a contemporary reading and weightage, which I think uh, we need to do, but we need to do it very, very carefully because practitioners of the uh, art form should not think that you're meddling with their form. So it takes a lot of many, many years of practice and interaction with the artists of those forms, if you really want to use those forms in your play, whether you're doing it as street theater or as Brazilian theater, whatever choice that you make. She, she says, uh, she also adds that street, street plays for her have been very powerful and, and, and inclusive. Yeah, they're powerful. But I, I mean, I, let's not even get into... Uh, I mean, I am also a street theater practitioner, and uh, so I would not underestimate that. But I also have my questions about um, street theater, the kind of street theater where we are making decisions for the people, you know, which I think we need to question. Because when we did the play on female infanticide in the mid 90s, we, we always used uh, we use that form to trigger off a discussion, not to really give a message. You know, so that's e that's equally very scary. Uh, uh, Madam, one more, uh, one more, just one more uh, question. Uh, uh, are there references of uh, the mainstream? Uh, you know, these kind of identities, Madam. Uh, are there references from the mainstream uh, culture uh, or identity, Madam? I'm not getting your point. No, madam, here, you know, we are talking about the marginal sections only. You know, these kind of whatever the transgender uh, man and woman, are there references in mainstream also? Did you find mainstream so identities? You, when, when you are dealing with marginality, the idea that they are marginal itself assumes that there is a mainstream. So while you are listening to the story of marginality, there will certainly be critique of mainstream. It will be there. It is the but it is up to me whether I want to really perform and show the mainstream or only comment about it. So in different plays, we do we do different things. 
Oh, all right. Uh, I think I think we'll have to just end our discussion there. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mange, for coming. Uh, you really enthralled us with uh, your performance. And I, I'd like to thank Revati and uh, Srijit also, although he couldn't be with us. But thank you again, Revati, Rombo Nandri. Mange, Ungaluku Rombo Nandri. Divya Bharati, you can talk to me. 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 So, thank you very much, Mange. Uh, thank you all for being here. Thanks so much. It was wonderful. I was very, very worried whether... what i am whatever i am sharing will make any sense um, no no it was from perfect from the discussion i think uh, some of it has gone through thank you so much okay yeah. thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much thank you dhanyavadagalu krishna murthy oh kiran ninga ninga enna kiran kiran anku pula thank you thank you very much thank you yeah thanks divya thanks for